Hey there fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King and today we've got the first part of a new series that I'm doing because my wife and I just got back from an enforced vacation, which I'll get into in a minute. <clears throat> and we planned the trip around going to a bunch of comic book stores. So first of all, got to give a shout out to my wonderful wife. She does enjoy going to comic stores. She buys a lot of graphic novels. <clears throat> we've shown some of these in the past. Um, a lot of games, a lot of dice, so she enjoys the stores too. Uh, but she really indulged me this time because we hit, over the course of our six days on the road, not one, not two, not four, but ten. That's right, we went to ten comic book stores. So, every two weeks for the next uh, couple of months, we're going to be going through those stores. I've got five videos where we're going to go through all 10 of those stores and I'm going to talk about them. Most of them I actually have video footage from on the inside. Not all of them, uh, but more than half of them, I think. I think like six of them I got video on the inside. <clears throat> we're going to be taking on a tour. Nine of these are in New Hampshire. The last one's in Massachusetts. So the first thing we're going to do is made a new map just for New Hampshire. Previously, we had one that included both New Hampshire and Maine, but New Hampshire, I'm getting enough stores. What we're going to do... A dedicated map for New Hampshire. You can see on the map we already have a couple filled in. Those are from previous trips to New Hampshire, but this time we're going to add nine more stores to that, starting here in Keene. So let's go to Keene, New Hampshire first. Beautiful town, uh, great downtown, super picturesque, but lots of cool shops and funky stores and restaurants and a really great downtown. And um, before we get to the downtown part, though, I'm gonna, we're going to start on the outskirts of town. So if you're coming through Keene, uh, you're coming in on 10 or on uh, 12 or I think 101 and you're heading west, whatever, uh, there's this giant rotary on the edge of town and right up, right next to the rotary is uh, the shopping plaza. And there's a great comic book there, store there called... <coughs> um, Enterprise comics, etc. Now I've shopped here before and I had got some great books from here. Um, I got my Josie 34 with the classic uh, psychedelic cover here. I got my Lobo number one here. So I've gotten some really good deals. I was able to take some footage as you're seeing from the inside of the store. Now they have a lot of cool stuff. Um, this is a really great store as I was, you know, my criteria, as I told my wife, is if they have boxes for things like Dell and Charlton and Western and War, they're probably going to have stuff I want because a lot of stores don't have that. But this place does. They have huge sections dedicated to things like Archie and War Books. And so they have lots and lots of stuff. Um, for me, uh, they also have a lot. Of, you know, you can see the wall books. They have a lot of superhero stuff. Um, for me, the, the superhero stuff is a little more than I personally want to pay. Now, as you know, I'm a notorious cheapskate when it comes to comics so um i try to get everything on the cheap and the people at enterprise know what their comics are worth so they have a lot of big keys a lot of first appearances a lot of silver age bronze age superhero stuff uh and you know you're gonna pay um going rate or more for those uh but if they have what you want you know and there's a there's a good chance they will have what you want so i'm um, not knocking the store but they have other stuff as well, and the other stuff for me is a little more um, in my price range, let's say. So let's show what I got here. As you know, part of it is I'm, I am going around. I'm trying to support all these comic stores. I tried to make sure to buy something in every comic store, and I spent a lot of money on this vacation. So some of this stuff I'm going to have to immediately resell to get my money back. Uh, but um, this store, we're going to start off. They do have dollar bins. I didn't find anything um, particularly cool valuable or anything to go in my dollar bin trading challenge but i did get this which is so goofy that i had to get it it's called arc comics premiere number one and uh, i think we're all familiar with the self-publishing indie boom in the 80s but this is actually from the 90s it's from 93 a little self-published book and they tried to get in on the the gimmick cover craze by doing a lenticular cover so this is a lenticular image that's been glued onto the cover and over the course of time the glue has ruined the lenticular aspect so um, it doesn't really work anymore you can see the overlapping images 
it doesn't really work. You can see the glue stain in the middle. Um, so just the idea that these people were so into these 90s gimmick covers that they were going to make their own self-published version was just fantastic for me. I had to get it. So this is out of the dollar bin. One of the, <laughs> I got some, some, uh, interesting dollar bin. I see, saw some weird stuff on this trip, but this has got to be one of the craziest. So for a dollar, I had to pick it up just for the sheer dumbness of it. And, and I love the passion of these people. Uh, going more into my collection now, as you know, I don't really read horror books, but I have been buying some stuff from a horror collection. I trimmed it down. What I really love is some of the classic covers. For me, I'm not into the pre-code stuff. Um, what I really like is the early Bronze Age stuff. So from when DC relaunched their horror books, which I think was in 68, um, up to about the end of the 20 cent era, like 74, they have all these great artists, you know, um, Neil Adams, Bernie Wrightson, who's my favorite, uh, Kaluta, and then they have stuff by Nick Cardi and some other great artists. I'm not sure who this is. I think it might be Nick Cardi. I don't see a signature on it. Um, so that this could be anybody. It could be Jack Abel. He did some of these. But it's House of Secrets 114. Uh I am a sucker for the this giant House of Secrets logo with the double bullet, the black cover. I'm also a big hockey fan, so this is a classic, um, the undead hockey team chasing the figure skater cover. Now this copy does have a tear right here, so this corner is dinged up, but it actually presents really well. It was only $4 um, because of the damage, so this is one, again, I'm putting together a small horror collection that's completely cover-based because I don't like reading the stories. I don't like horror stories. But I love the art and the, the cover design from DC. So my horror collection is going to be just about all DC. And I got another one there. This has been on my want list when I started putting together my horror want list. This is lower grade than I was planning on getting for this book, but I want to support the stores. It's always also cooler to buy books in person than to buy them on eBay. So for $10, I got this. It's House of Secrets number 90. Uh, it's got... Design-wise, it's a little wonky when they were doing this because they just didn't have it quite work it out. So it takes up a little too much space, but I still love it where they have the symbol over here. And Neil Adams' cover um, with this great... Uh, haunted house in space the woman in peril gothic um, horror there's a mini series here a mini run 88 89 and 90 all have gothic horror covers 88 is my favorite i just picked up you'll be seeing it in a later video um, i picked up a, a really a super um, great high grade copy of house of secrets 88 but that's for that's for another time it's not part of this i bought that on uh on the CGC forms, but anyway, 89s by Gray Morrow, another great, um, so I had both of those already, so I was really happy to get 90 to sort of complete that triptych um, of covers. Um, and then finally, uh, a couple romance. They do have romance comics at this place, so again, anytime they're going to have, if you find the store that has these broken out, um, it, that's really the only kind of place that normally has the romance books. And here is an issue of Cynthia Doyle, Nurse in Love. Huh? We got some nurses in love in the wild. Now, I might already have this one. It's tricky because, first of all, I forgot to add Cynthia Doyle to my checklist. So that's big problem number one. Um, but secondly, uh, they don't have the numbers on the cover. So I don't know what issue this is anyway. Um, all the covers... Most of the covers look the same. There's a couple that really stand out. This is not one of them. So I don't know if I had it or not, but I bought it anyway. I figured if I do have it, no big deal. I know there's a lot of you out there that love the Nurses in Love. I'm sure I can find someone to trade or sell it to, so no problem. Oh, actually, it says 73 on the back. That might be the last issue of Cynthia Doyle. 74, 73. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, but then I got this. Now, I've been focusing my romance collection down. At some point, I'm going to do a whole video about that process. Um, and I decided to get rid of a lot of my DC and Charlton romance books and just because I was just filling the numbers, you know. So I made my list of the, all the issues that I really want based on the stories or the cover art or whatever. And they had one of the ones on my checklist. And uh, it's this here. It's Girls Romances number 45 from 1957. 
with this great cover. I love the the uh, monochrome, the woman in the foreground. I love the, the big moon with the night, and she's watching uh, her bow with another woman out there. Um, just love the design. I love the art. Love the era, as we talked about before. Ten cent. I like the banner. So anyway, um, this is one of the ones that I want on my checklist. It was only ten dollars. It is um, lower grade. Um, has a lot of issues around the spine, but it presents really nice uh, because most of the issues are along the spine, but they're all um, vertical. Uh, presents really well. It's only ten bucks. So um, really happy with that. So those were my pickups from uh enterprise comics etc i'm real happy with that just a note i mentioned this briefly so this this series of videos we're going to be doing for the next um every the next five videos in my haul they're all going to be from this trip right part of the reason for that is that um i am still buying a lot of books as i've been selling off parts of my collection i've been really winnowing down getting rid of not just musty stuff but stuff that doesn't fit my collection i've really been kind of trying to narrow my collecting focus as part of that as i've been selling stuff off i've been buying a ton of new stuff a lot of situations where i'm selling 50 100 comics and taking that money and buying like one or two keys um but because of the mustiness uh, that we've had i'm trying to let my lungs recover and so i have a mountain of unopened mail just piles of packages that i haven't opened this series of videos is going to allow me to have a couple or three months to just let that stuff sit out of the way, let my lungs calm down. And then once things are back to normal, hopefully a couple of three months from now, I'll open all those packages. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of haul videos where I'm going to have some real bangers because I've been getting a lot of keys, big, big ticket books. I've been getting CGC books. Like I've been getting some really cool stuff, uh, but I don't want to touch any of that stuff. So um, just wanted to mention that before we go to the next store. Now, the next store is called Comic Boom, and Comic Boom's right downtown. I recorded some video of this, uh, but I did it backwards. So I started at the door of the store, and then I went to the center of town. I should have done it the other way, but I wanted you to see just how close it is to the absolute center of Keene. And when you're on Main Street, there's there's two rotaries, one at either end. And the one at the top end, at the uh, what I think is the, the north end of town, um, where the like city hall is and stuff, Comic Boom is right there. And there's there's some great parking right on Main Street, so it's great to just park there for a couple hours and walk around the stores. And Comic Boom's right there. And this is one of my favorite stores. So of all the ten stores that I've been to um, on this trip, there's two or three that really stood out to me. Comic Boom. I've been there before and I've gotten some great books there before and I got some great books there again. Last time I was there, which is about three years ago, uh, I picked up um, an LB Cole war cover for 20 bucks that I flipped. And then um, I also got uh, Josie number 46, really cheap. Um, and I got two or three other things. I found uh, Megaton number two in the 50 cent bin, which has already been traded away in my trading challenge in the previous round so i found a lot of cool stuff there um and, and i want to show you some of the great stuff that i got there this time uh i spent more money at this store than at any of the others by more than double um because they had so much stuff that was so cool that you just never see anywhere but i particularly want to highlight how great the store is because they've had a lot of trouble over the last couple of years during the pandemic and not just because of the pandemic um, they had a flood and uh, the owner told me that they lost like $28,000 worth of stuff. They didn't get, they did have insurance, but insurance didn't cover all of it. And then they also dropped the insurance dropped them. And that was a problem because a few months later they had another flood where someone upstairs messed up something with the pipes and it leaked through the ceiling. They lost another $2,000 worth of comics and had to throw them, just throw them out. Didn't get any money back. So they've been really struggling um, as a result, you know, they lost a lot of their stock. So uh, a lot of the great back issues that they had when I was there a couple years ago are gone, destroyed by the flood. So it's it's really been a tough time. And I wanted to just talk about how great the store is. If you're in the Keene area, if you're anywhere in southern New Hampshire or either in southern Vermont, make the trip to Keene. 
go to Comic Boom. Great store. It's my kind of place. You know, it's crowded and it's filled with boxes, filled with old stuff. You pull out from under the thing and you go through and they've got all like all the old stuff that, that I love and that I know you guys really like. Um, and so I wanted to spend a lot of money there and boy, did I ever wait till you see the stuff I got in this place. Let's start in the 50 cent bins though. Um, I'm always looking in the 50 cent bins and the dollar bins trying to find stuff, of course, not just for my own personal collection, but for the dollar bin trading challenge. And uh, I'll show you what I got here. First of all, there's Usagi Ojimbo free comic book day, um, which is a collaboration between Stan um, and Julie. I think Julie Sakai is his daughter not his granddaughter anyway she does the the chibi usagi um so i think i missed this when this came out so i was happy to get this for my personal collection out of the 50 cent bin um i also got this for myself it's the insect man 25th anniversary special i've talked about insect man before basically my lcs um that's entertainment in worcester mass the guy that founded that he when he was a kid in the mid 60s he wrote and drew his own little comics, um, little amateur comics. That he did. His character was called Insect Man. And when he had his comic book store going up in the late 70s, he revived the character. And they did these little mini comics that they would like um, photocopy and stuff like that. When I was a kid and first got into comics, this was the first like self-published comics that I've seen. And as you know, now I self-publish my own comics. So this is a point of particular interest for me. Uh, and I always have this nostalgia for Insect Man because that was the first one I saw in like 1984, 85 maybe, uh, was was an, an issue of Insect Man. It was like issue 103 or something like that. This is the 25th anniversary special, um, which is from 1991. Uh, and somewhere um, uh, I have the 50th anniversary special that they did in 2016. So um, this is a book, of course, uh, I used to have it. I don't have it anymore, but this is going to go with my 50th anniversary special. Um, and the back cover actually, I think, is by Kevin Eastman. You can see the signature there, Eastman 90, Insect Man. Uh, and so uh, it's just a cool book for me personally. Um, now, in terms of things... Uh, Oh, oh, wait, there's one more that I got for myself. It's NFL Super Pro number 11. I already have most of the run of NFL Super Pro. Uh, at one point, I bought the first eight issues for like 90 cents each from a comic book store. The last couple issues of this run are hard to find, including number 11. Number 12 is the last issue. I think I have a number 12, but it's super trashed. But I'm, I'm finishing this one, yes. And for some reason, NFL Super Pro is actually playing basketball. And you can see... It says pro nose b ball, so it's a Bo Jackson reference. So, yeah, that's about as dorky as it gets. That's that's just for me. So I bought a few things that are. When I'm doing the dollar bin trading challenge, you'll notice that I have a lot of stuff that that I've found in dollar bins that I'm adding to the thing over the years. There's a couple different things that I do when I go dollar bin diving. Obviously, there's a lot of books that I find that I'm looking for that are worth money at the time that I'm getting them. Books that are worth 10, 20, 50, you know, 200, however much they're worth. Um, those are, that's one side of things. The other side of things is if I see stuff in these dollar bins that isn't worth anything now, but I feel like mm, there's some potential maybe down the road, I'll buy it for 50 cents or a dollar, I'll throw it in the bin, and then maybe a few years or 10 years or whatever from now, it'll be worth something. Some of those books are worth something now, and some of them I still have piles of, and they're not worth anything. But, yeah, you know, there's little risk, and it's a lot of fun. And I bought a couple things here. Um, this is so beat up. Uh, I mean, it's mid-grade, but it's so beat up that it's probably not even worth the 50 cents. But it's a character that I think is really cool. Uh, it's Night Mask, number one, the first appearance of Night Mask from the New Universe. Um, of the New Universe characters, Night Mask, I think, is one of the most interesting um, and the has the most potential to be used in in the main Marvel Universe or in the MCU. So I don't know, it's 50 cents. Why not? Um, pick that up. Uh, I also got three copies of Zombie Number Zero. Now, Milestone has had a revival recently when Milestone first kicked off. 
they had four titles, right? They had Static, and that's a $50 book. I already have one copy in my trading challenge that I traded for. They have Icon, and I've got like five or six copies of Icon that I got out of Dollar Bins, and now that's a $20 book, so that one's paid off. Blood Syndicate, and I think I've got 10 copies of Blood Syndicate number one from Dollar Bins, and that's still not worth anything, and Hardware, and I've never seen those in a Dollar Bin. I'm missing that one completely. But later on, they added a fifth title, and this is this is it here, Zombie. So I got um, three copies of Zombie number zero, just in case, somewhere down the line. With the um, Milestone Revivals, they end up doing something with Zombie. Who knows? For 50 cents, why not? Okay, those are the dollar bin books, the 50 cent bins. So let's get to the real purchases. Okay, first of all, I actually got this for Tartan Phantom, one of my viewers here. You may have seen his name in the comments. Um, I had uh, talked to him before, and we've traded, and, and I've sold stuff to him a couple of times. And he had mentioned he's trying to put together a complete run of all the Super DC Giants. Uh, and I came across a Super DC Giant that I've never seen before. Um, so I picked it up for him. Uh, so this is going to be going to him next time we do a deal. Uh, and it is a Super DC Giant S19, the Jerry Lewis issue. Never seen this. Um, yeah, this is an oddball. So um, anyway, uh, sometimes you just see something you've never seen before, you got to get it. Speaking of which, here's a book that I had to get when I saw it, April 1967. It's Todd Holton, Super Green Beret. Now, as you know, I've talked about this at length in multiple videos. My father served in Vietnam. Uh, he did two tours in Vietnam. He was in Vietnam in 1967, and he was reading comics while he was in Vietnam. So I saw this. I had to get it. And this is one of the wackiest concepts. Now, I haven't read the comic yet, but just from the cover, it just seems to be the idea is, what if you took the idea behind Captain Marvel, Shazam Captain Marvel from the 40s, but made that guy a soldier in Vietnam because what it says is on this little blurb up here, action like no action ever before. The curtain rises on a new war hero, not a tough veteran and lestee. No, it is a teenage boy too young to enlist who creates amazing legends as a super soldier by means of fantastic superpowers. So they have a kid that's up here but he turns into this adult Green Beret with superpowers and he's fighting the North Vietnamese army. I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but it's absolutely bug nuts. Um, so I had to buy it, of course. I had to buy it. So that was one of these things. It's five bucks. That's, um, that's coming home with me. Um, okay, a couple things from a checklist. Uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch 79. I've mentioned in one of my previous videos I showed you when I was up in New Hampshire, I found a store where they had like 75% of the manga-inspired Sabrina run. Um, again, it's done in a manga style, but the story is sort of inspired by Harry Potter where she's at a magic school for witches and wizards. And I'm um, trying to put together the whole run. 79 is one of the ones I was missing, so I picked that up. Um, I don't even know how much it was. I think it was cover price. Uh, this was six dollars. It's Life with Archie sixty one, so um, I'm slowly getting there with the Life with Archie series. I also got another one, and we'll see in a later video. A later store had one one issue that I needed, so we're we're slowly making progress with this. Okay, here's the big purchases. First off, you're you're gonna be shocked, but I bought an issue of Swamp Thing. Why did I do that, you ask? Well, I'm not a huge fan of Swamp Thing. As you know, I don't like Swamp Monsters at all. I'm also not a huge fan of Batman. But what I am a big fan of is Bernie Wrightson. And I've always loved this cover. So it was $20. It's a really nice copy. Um, it's probably... It's probably a 7.5. Hard to say. But it's a beautiful copy for 20 bucks. I just love this cover so much. So this is going to go probably in my horror collection, even though it's a superhero cover. 
um, because that's a lot of the book, horror books I'm getting are rights and covers just because he's so great. And I'm trying to get nicer copies of them. Um, so it's just a great, great comic. And then here's what I really spend my money on. Underneath one of the tables, they had a, a box of war comics. And so, of course, I'm interested in war comics. Wanted to look through them, looking, you know, certain issues I always look for. The last time I was there, I got an All-American Men of War, uh, number 90, for my personal collection. So I'm always looking for war books. But in the middle of the war books, there was some books that were not war books. And here they are. You ready for this? It was a bunch of issues of Mad, but not Mad Magazine, Mad the comic book. And I had to buy them. The price was great. So here we are. It's Mad number 20. Uh, this was $20. Low grade. Uh, this has always been one of my favorite it covers. Um, it's got written on it as though in pen. It says Mad number 20, February, 10 cents. Subject, humor in a jugular vein. And then up in this little sticker on the cover, it says special issue of MAD designed to sneak into class. So they made this look like a composition notebook so the kids could bring it into class at school. Love this. It's so funny. Um, it's just great. Uh, and then another great cover. It's MAD number 22. Again, it was $20. Um, and so I just... You know, it's, it's low grade. There's some issues with the spine. But again, uh, $20. Had to buy it. Um, no way I was leaving without it. And for me, you know, it's a special art issue. It's making fun of modern art. This cover to me looks still looks modern. Um, I love how they've taken the and they've put this screaming goofy face on there. One of my favorites, uh, just tremendous. Um, now, remember what I just said about not leaving without these? Well, I actually left without the next ones. And I went, we went back to the hotel room. And I came busting, I was sitting in the bathroom looking at my phone. And I realized I had made a colossal error. And we ended up the next day, we had to go back into town to get the others. Because the big issue of MAD that I desperately needed for my collection, I realized was there and I had missed it. For some reason, I didn't, when I was flipping through the box, I made a note of the cover, and I didn't realize it was this. And here it is. It's Mad number 12. And you'll notice here the important part. Starchy. The typical story of typical America's most hated typical teenager. This is an infamous Archie Comics parody done by Mad. And uh, it's very well known. It's extremely funny. And as an Archie collector, the chance to get this in my collection, I had to have it. Don't know how I missed it. It was $30, which is still a great deal for this. Um, this one's a little bit nicer than the other. It does have some issues. It has a tear on the cover right here. Very small one. Um, but it, it's quite, you know, it's very solid. Um, probably 3.5 to 4. Um, and, uh, just thrilled to have this in my collection. All of these, like don't collect mad, but when you see these books, you have to get them because you may never see them again. And certainly not at these prices, tremendous prices. When I was buying the stuff, um, I actually felt a little bad because the owner was basically like, he needed the money for the store, but he was like, he didn't really want to sell these, but he had to. And he said that, um. He's been running the store for 15 years. He's never seen any of these issues of MAD before. Never seen them. And there's one more. Here's the, for a lot of you, this is going to be the big one because it's an all-time classic MAD cover. All-time classic, Jack Davis. Here it is. You ready for this? It's MAD number two. Now, this was $80, and it's got some fairly significant issues here. The spine is split from the bottom staple all the way down. It's also got some chipping, significant chipping here. But for the grade, for its technical grade, it's beautiful because, I mean, I would have this about a 
somewhere, I want to say 1.8. Um, you might say 1.5, but you're kind of quibbling. Um, and, but for a book that's in that grade, there's not like the, the scent, the image, there's nothing else wrong with the image. There's no creasing. Um, it's, it's great. And that's what you want with a low grade book is a, is a book that is low grade, but looks higher grade. Cause you want to display a cover like this, right? So, um, you had to buy it at that price. Um, fact is it doesn't really fit in my collection. I'll probably end up having to resell it to make some of the money back because after leaving the store, we went to eight more stores and I spent way more, way more money than I was expecting. So I don't know how long I'm going to actually going to keep this in my collection, but for now, look at it. Just amazing. Right? So fantastic. So I can't say, I can't say it highly enough about this place. You got to check it out. Keene's a really cool town to begin with. These comic stores are only about a mile and a half apart from each other. Uh, so you make a day of it, go up there, see, go to all the cool shops and whatever, and definitely check out both of these comic stores and get some of these cool comics because they're so great. I do also, before I end the video, I want to mention one other thing. About 25 minutes west of Keene is the great town of Browborough, Vermont, a city that's near and dear to my heart. My family is from just outside of Brattleboro, my father's side of the family. So um, we drove over to Brattleboro. Now, there's no comic book store in Brattleboro, which is a darn shame, but there are there's some really cool places in Brattleboro if you're into comics. First of all, there's a great antique store called Twice Upon a Time. It was closed when we were there. Just a couple of stores up from there on Main Street is a record store where they have all these vintage records and they have a lot of comic books, and the comics there are a dollar each. Um, a lot of them are modern, but there's a lot of stuff from like the late aughts, a lot of stuff from like 2007, 2008, 2009. I don't know enough about the moderns. I spent quite a bit of time looking through there and I was left with the impression that there's definitely some cool books and there's definitely stuff in there that has to be worth money. I'm sure of it, but I didn't know enough about it to figure out what they were. So my loss, your gain, but there's also some great galleries and stuff in Brattleboro and some great bookstores. There's great antique uh, used bookstore. I was just trying to come up with a fancy word, but there's a great used bookstore, great new bookstore. They're right across the street from the other. And I got a couple things in those. So I wanted to highlight them real quick at the new bookstore. I got this It's called um, the 500 years of indigenous resistance comic book. It's a great big oversized book and it's exactly what it says. It's a history book chronicling all the various um, indigenous resistance um, rebellions and wars uh, of resistance from various native groups in the Americas, starting right off the bat um, with the tribes fighting back against uh, Columbus, enslaving them in the 1490s, all the way up to the present day. Now, um, I've mentioned this before, my wife's Native American, her family's Native American, and so um, obviously this is uh, something near and dear to their hearts and to my heart, and I buy a lot of stuff, uh, comic books about Native Americans, um, and I send them to my father-in-law, and he doesn't really read or collect comics, but he's amassing a huge collection now because I keep sending him this stuff, but we're going to check this out, and then I'll send it along to him after I'm done because he's also into history and military history in particular. So this is something that um, I think he'll like. And I, I just thought it was really cool. I had to buy it. And then the, the used bookstore across the street had this, which I'm really interested in reading. It's called Comic Books in America, 1945 to 1954. Um, it's by William W. Savage Jr. And it's um, a scholarly look at the attacks against comics and the red menace and book burnings and all the stuff that led to the comics code and how that fits in with the other stuff that was happening in the United States in the post-war years. So I've read quite a bit about this. You know, I have the 10 cent plague, so I'm familiar with a lot of the basic stuff. This is from the nineties. Um, so I'm interested in getting this and I thought it was a cool book to add to my comic book sort of a historian collection. So if you have a chance to, if you're gonna be in Keene anyway, head over to Brattleboro and vice versa. They're less than a half hour apart. Um, beautiful country to drive through as well. 
and there's just a lot of funky shops and stuff. Definitely worth your time to go to both. Even though there's no comic stores in Brattleboro, um, comic fans and art fans and book fans, will have, there's stuff to do there. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, that's just part one of this five-part trip through New Hampshire. We'll be back next time uh, with three new stores that I hit up uh, in Concord, New Hampshire. So... Um, That'll be in two weeks, of course, between now and then there'll be other videos, but uh, let me know what you think down below. I'm still over the moon of finding those mad, like, you, it's not something you see that often. So, um, yeah, this is, of all the comic stores I've been to uh, since I started doing this a year and a half ago, this is a top five comic store for me, Comic Boom in Keene, New Hampshire. So much cool stuff. So, um, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.